Hey everyone, Katrina Sawa here, the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach with jumpstartyourmarketing.com and my new friend, Jacqueline Dlieb, uh, and she is a powerhouse. We are both experts in the self-love area. Yes, I know you know me from business and marketing and jumpstarting your business, but in case you didn't know, I had a book called Love Yourself Successful uh, because I went through a lot of stuff in my life uh, and how to get rid of toxic people and stop settling and all that kind of stuff and how I had to take charge of my life. And uh, when talking to Jacqueline the other day, we thought, oh my God, this is some stuff of the, some of the things, same things you do. And so we thought, let's do a Facebook Live to share each other's stuff. Uh, and so Jacqueline, tell them a little bit more about what you do in your business and then we'll dive into some juicy tips on self-love mastery. Perfect. Great. Well, I do a hybrid of coaching and healing to help professional women lower their stress and anxiety using a science-based modality to dial down the drama. And then I actually use my drama background to help people through personal issues using drama therapy for personal growth. So taking advantage of that performance background for non-actors to help move through some sticky issues. Awesome. And you guys make sure you can check out her website there too. And please comment or say hello if you're there. And uh, if you have questions along the way or what's your biggest challenge with, um, you know, your own self-confidence and making sure you take care of yourself. And it's funny because as I was listening to you just a second ago, I'm thinking, wow, we have two totally different energies on the line today. We have the in your face, like, hello, I'm here. What can I do for you? Kind of energy. And we have the calm energy of Jacqueline. And I was thinking, oh, should I calm down to match her energy? And I'm thinking, no, I'm going to keep it up. I'm going to keep up the pace. And so we're going to have the yin yang of energy going on here today. <laughs> I've got so many things on my plate that uh, I've got another book launching. I've got uh, oh, an event coming up in four weeks. So I'm just on the go, go, go doing it today. So that's the kind of energy you're getting from me today. So, but you can totally provide that yang, yang, yang energy for everybody. So, um, yes, let's dive in. Let's dive in with self love mastery. Why are we talking about self love mastery? I mean, there's so many people talking about it, right? How, how are we different? What do we do about it? Um, why is it so important to us? And what do we know that maybe you don't know or haven't heard yet? That's what we want to try to get at today. And so, you know, I'd love, Jacqueline, if you have, what's your biggest, I don't know, your biggest tip or takeaway or thing that you teach people um, about self-love that you, you know, maybe they haven't heard of or maybe they need a reminder of today? Sure. Um, I'm going to use an example from my own life, actually. And that is that we're worth it, that we're worth engaging in some kind of self-love practice and that we don't always recognize the need to do self-love practices because sometimes we get very used to marinating in a kind of a crummy mood, so much so that it feels normal. And if it feels normal, it doesn't occur to you to shift anything. Hmm. Yeah. You know, and I, I'll just use an example. I no longer suffer, luckily, from depression. But about 20 years ago, when I was working with a therapist, she said to me one day, you know, honey, I think you have depression. Mm. And it was a real shock because I didn't know. It just felt like that's the way life was. So I got treatment for it. And I'm... Luckily, I don't suffer from it and I'm not on medication any longer, but it started the awareness that I could feel different. Just the awareness that I don't have to stay in this sort of crummy place. So even just the awareness that it's possible to shift and that we don't have to stay in the same place. For me, that's a really big first step. And that's a first step for a lot of people because they don't necessarily know why they need to do any self-love work. Right. Awareness is usually the first step with anything, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. 
It is. Yeah. I think the biggest thing for me for self-love is to realize if you have um, outside influences that are affecting you. Yes, we can take care of ourselves. So something different that you guys may not hear all the time is that you really want to take a, a look at big picture of the people in your life, right? Um, this is goes back to when I was in my starter marriage and it was a great time. I mean, he was a great guy and we were in love and everything was great. And then I started a business mm -hmm. and, and my, my expectations for myself, my goals, my dreams, everything shifted, everything shifted. And I wanted so much more, more, I wanted to learn more, I wanted to do more. I had bigger impact goals and money goals and I took bigger risks, mind you, or I wanted to, right? But the relationship that I was in, the person didn't believe in me and didn't really understand me and what I wanted and, and wouldn't even try to understand what I wanted. It was so the non-entrepreneur mindset that it became a really tough living situation. Mm. And we felt like roommates. And I would cry myself to sleep almost every night wow. because I, he didn't get me. And that's, that's hard. When someone doesn't get you, especially the love of your life, right? I'm like, that's hard to live with. And it also squashes your motivation and your, you know, your drive to succeed. So I would get out of the house and go networking all the time during the day because that would fire me up and I'd be like I wasn't beginning of this call, right? And then I'd come home and I'd be like, oh, okay, nobody, you know, I'm not going to do anything now. Or I would just, it would be horrible. So my big thing about self-love is first to make sure you have no one in your life that sucks you, your energy like that. Nobody that doesn't believe 150% in you and your abilities. And regardless if they understand it or, uh, you know, really know what you're doing, that it's, they still are your cheerleader, right? So we have to take inventory of the people in our lives first, in my opinion, because if you don't rid yourself of or avoid heavily those people on, on a regular basis, then it's really going to be hard to stay in that self-confident mode and do the work because you'll just give up because you figure, why should I? Because this person doesn't believe in me or sub unconscious level. You'll do the unconscious, you know, activities that lead you to doing nothing and not really being motivated. So I think that's one of the biggest things that I did. And I wrote about it in my book, the love yourself successful book, is about making sure you get rid of toxic people in your life, even if it happens to be a spouse and it's a tangled web you weave with kids and all that stuff. I get it, but why would you want to settle for someone who's not 150% supportive of you for the rest of your life? What if you live for the next another four years? I, I didn't want to do that. I was 35 when I divorced and I just, I didn't want to do that. So that's one of the biggest things I see that we need to do because you can do all the self-care work you want, but if you don't have someone being your cheerleader, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. It sounds yeah. like you had an amazing um, insight there and then you took it to all the other parts of your life and you did some pruning. I did. I did some pruning and I really, I realized I only had the two, two negative people in my life at the time. <clears throat> it was my, my starter husband who I divorced two years into it or two years after I became an entrepreneur. <clears throat> and then my dad, who um, I didn't see very often, mind you, but when I did see him, he one minute he'd be saying, oh, I'm so proud of you. And then the next minute it's like, well, how come you haven't lost that weight? Or how come you haven't fixed your crooked tooth or whatever? Like all these, like he'd say these great things and then he'd say these negative things. I'm like, Ugh. So I think the outside influences sometimes make a huge difference to how we feel about ourselves and we, you know, we have to put a bubble around ourselves sometimes just to protect our energy. So yeah. yeah. Okay. So what, what is maybe the second most important thing that you think uh, people need to know in regards to what you might help them with? 
Well, you know, I have, I work with like a lot of coaches. I have coaches too. Yeah. And I have a couple, I have a business coach and I have a sort of healing coach and my healing coach talks about self perception. Mm. And when we start to practice, do self love practices, our self perception starts to improve. And as our self perception, the way we think and feel about ourselves starts to raise up, the, this is kind of an inside out version of what you just said, then mm. it's, then we start to attract different people. Mm. I think that our, we attract who we are. Yeah. We attract our self perception. So as we shift it into a more loving and heart centered orientation, then the world starts to become closer to our new version of ourselves. That's why practices, I'm a big believer in doing practices, whether that's meditation or breath work or heart focused breathing or yoga, it could take many, many forms. But as we start to do these practices and we feel better that to sound a little new agey that vibration of feeling better starts to attract like-minded people and we find that little by little uh the people who start to come into our lives starts to shift in accordance with that new and improved more loving version of ourselves so that self-perception is really a key um, I love coming from the inside and trying to do triage on our own emotional responses. And, yeah, yeah. And how about you? How how? What's your what's your second insight? Well, I think I guess I work from the outside in. I don't know. <laughs> now I think about it. Wait. Perfect. It's they're both needed. Right. So, you know, because I, I'm all about helping you make more money doing what you love, I want to make sure you're first of all doing what you love, right? So a lot of times I come in contact with people who are in a job that they hate and they're trying to start their own business or they're starting up a business that they think they're interested in, but it's not necessarily their passion. Or even if they are passionate about the thing they're doing, they still stumble over how to really grow it or get clients or ask for the money. And so it's, it's getting that clarity on all of the pieces and making sure that you're on the right path. I have people come to me all the time and say, well, this is what I'm doing in my business. I said, yes, but it doesn't sound, you're, sound like you're very excited about that. What do you really want to do? Mm. And they say, well, I really want to do this over here, but I know that's like 10 years down the road. And I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why does it have to be 10 years down the road? Tell me more about that. Right. And as soon as they tell me about it, I'm like, oh, my God, that can happen now. What do you think? Like, they're just scared or they don't know what they don't know or they just perceive it to be this huge thing when they just don't have the plan. Right. And then whatever they're doing now seems like the plan, but it's not really what they want to do. And when, when you're doing something that you don't really want to do or it's not your real passion, you're just you're in it about 75 percent, sometimes less. Right, you're not usually in it 100%. Therefore, the clients just aren't magically attracted to you as fast as they would if you're super passionate about what you're doing. Mm. So I think it's really finding that true passion and then and then learning what you can do to make it a money making business mm -hmm. out of it because yeah. you just don't know what you don't know. And you know, thankfully, you have a business coach. I have business coaches too, and marketing coaches and all kinds of coaches. And I've been doing this for 16 years <laughs> and I keep learning and implementing in my business to know more and to keep refining it. I'm thinking like, well, I love doing live events, right? So I do a lot more events these days than I used to. I used to only do one or two a year. Now I'm at four or five or six a year. And because I love teaching in that way and inspiring in that way and really connecting with people. So Find out what you really, really want to do. There's 
95% of the time, there's always a way to make a lot of money at it. You just haven't thought about it yet. <laughs> All right, so we could go on and on and on. Um, and I know, do you have like a, a system that you teach or, you know, how do you really um, take people through a process to get through some of this stuff? Sure. Well, I teach a, an evidence-based healing modality and that helps lower excess cortisol, which is a stress hormone, and it brings anxiety down and it gets people connected to the heart more, which mm. is a very different way of living. You know, we've all been trained, I was trained, most of us, in school that the brain is the captain, but when we, and it certainly has an enormous, um, effect on our function on every level but the heart when we energize and focus on the heart it actually has so many neurons that it's kind of got a little mini brain and it sends 80 to 90 percent more information to the brain than the brain sends to the heart only 10 percent so what i lead people through is a form of coaching that's short term that gets them into using techniques that focus on the heart, slow down in order to get more productive. It's kind of counterintuitive and to lower anxiety. So it's called heart math coaching. And then I also lead people through drama therapy for personal growth, which uses uh, improv and various dramatic techniques to move through from a place of depletion to renewal. That's really what I offer people, whether it's any modalities to come from depletion to renewal. And by doing that, it really helps with our decision-making because when we're really stressed out and really anxious or in a very heightened negative state, what we might call a negative state, our brain goes offline and our decision-making is negatively impacted. So it's working from that focus on the heart to develop intuition and lower stress. Hmm. Sounds amazing. <laughs> I have another client who does that actually, and it is. I've heard really good things about it. So that's cool. And uh, so, what, what's, how do you how do you work? Well. Is I know. I love helping people obviously jumpstart their business and make more money. But when it comes to the self love stuff, yes. um, I do have that, you know, love. I have a love funnel and I have a money funnel. So uh, when you're really looking for more self love mastery, I really think um, my book, I mean, I put so much stuff into that book originally. And it took me three years to get that book done because I had to go through a few more experiences in order to really capture what I wanted to get in there. And there's the four types of love that I really talk about in the book that if you're an entrepreneur, you have to focus on these four types of love, even if you're strapped for money and you, all you can think about is getting clients. If you don't focus on them, it's going to be really hard to pull in all the regular cash flow that you want. So I... Yeah, I know it takes some um, uh, fancy, you know, it takes some determination to really do both. And so the book is really great. Uh, I have a teleseries that goes with the, the book. And I even have an online dating program for women over 40 <laughs> uh, in my love funnel. Because uh, when I got divorced and went out on my own after a couple of years, I was like, oh, but I really want a relationship now, one that really supports me. And I went through a whole lot of craziness in my online dating. And I developed systems because I'm all about marketing and business and systems. So I had a system for online dating. So it's funny. Every once in a while, I run across somebody who just really hates the online dating thing. They're not finding somebody, but they really want somebody. They have a hole in their heart like I did. And so that's a really cool thing to help you find the love of your life. And I talk about being all in, just like you would in your business. You got to be all in when you're out looking for, you know, finding your Mr. and Mrs. Right. So 
Um, the love, you know, you can you can get the book. Actually, if you're watching this, you can get it for like ten bucks plus shipping right now. If you want to go get the book at loveyourselfsuccessful.com, loveyourselfsuccessful.com. The book's on that page for ten dollars, but also you can get a one-hour audio. It's not the Tele series, but it's a one-hour audio on the four types of love that I talk about. So it goes into depth on really how to do those. And then um, the tele series is, comes after, if you're interested, you know, you can get a good deal on getting that or the online dating. It's, it's fun. I love talking about this stuff, um, although I don't always lead with it. Mm -hmm. uh, super fun because I just hate to see people being unhappy in their lives. I want them happy and in love with themselves and a significant other, so. <laughs> How about you? How can they get more information from you? Well, the best way probably right now is to direct message me here on Facebook, or you can leave a comment and I will be happy to reach out. And I like to offer people an initial, some time on the phone to see what's going on. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it was fun being here. I mean, we could go on for hours, I'm sure. But, you know, I know your attention spans are, are low, people. So let's uh, <laughs> move on to the next thing or take action on one of these things today and just make it make it a practice. Get it. Get that new awareness and take one little step to get you towards more self-love mastery. So thanks for being here, Jacqueline. It was fun. And thanks for being here, everybody, and watching on the replay. Um, we will still watch in the comments if you comment on the replay. If you comment the word replay, I'll even, <clears throat> I might even throw in two books for the price of one. I'll throw in my Jumpstart Your New Business Now book if you go buy the book. So if you put the word replay in the comments below and you go buy the book. So awesome. All right, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.